This episode is sponsored by Clio, cloud-based practice management software. Makes it easy to manage your law firm from intake to invoice. Try it for free at clio.com. That's C-L-I-O dot com. C-L-I-O dot com. Hello, and welcome to another edition of On the Road with Legal Talk Network. This is Guy Sakalakis, and I'm the host for today's show, which is being recorded on location at the 2019 Clio Cloud Conference in lovely San Diego, California. Joining me now is John Strohmeyer. John, welcome to the show. Thank you, Guy. Great to see you. It's great to see you, too. How are you enjoying your time? Oh. Uh, I've been in Southern California for the last few days. It is nice, though I know I'm going to have to go back to work soon enough. Are you considering just staying here permanently? No. Okay. That will not happen. Fair enough. We'll get to that. <laughs> Before we get to our topic, John, tell us a little bit more about yourself. Sure. I own Strohmeyer Law, based in Houston, Texas, where I help clients with international tax, probate, and estate planning issues. Awesome. Well, thanks so much for taking the time to speak with us today. Let's start with a substantive question. Substantive only. Yes. So you are a service expert. Tell us a little bit about how you developed this expertise that you're now applying and delivering to your current clients. Well, I was lucky enough to have a first career working for the Four Seasons Hotels. So between college and law school, I spent four years as kind of a break in my education where I said, look, I need to get out of school. Let's make sure before I take on three more years of school that I actually want to do something like this. So I just got a job at the Four Seasons in Austin, started at front desk, and then worked my way up and was night manager for three years. So I, I would show up at 11 o'clock at night, leave around eight or nine in the morning, and just about everything would end up on my desk. That's awesome. And, and this is one of the reasons I love talking to you about this, because this is one of those areas of experience and learning that so many lawyers just never have uh, the opportunity to learn. And so it carries over when they start practicing law, no client experience, no client service background. So tell us a little bit about what you find to be the most important aspects of delivering great service. So a lot of it has to do with knowing what you're doing. Everybody in the market, you know, everybody, if you think about the business market, from McDonald's to the Four Seasons, those big professional companies that frankly know what they're doing, they've picked a spot in the market and they are targeting their service level. It's not an accident that McDonald's delivers what they deliver, that Best Western delivers what they deliver, you know, all the way up to Four Seasons. It's not an accident. And law firms can apply the same level to what they're doing too. It's okay to be a lower service, non-bespoke, 100% of the time law firm that's what we're looking for. Make that decision and you target for it. That's awesome advice. How do you, as if I'm a lawyer and I'm hearing you and I'm saying, that actually makes a lot of sense to me. How do you start figuring out where you want to be in the market? It's hard to figure that out. I can't tell you how to do that. It's going to be based on who your clients are, what your price point is. That'll direct it. I mean, if you're doing a low bono service, you're not going to have you know, filigreed <laughs> appointments in your office. That's okay. But realizing there are limits to what you can do and you're going to target within it. If you are doing the high touch service, you are probably going to spend the money on higher dollar uh, water and furniture, but realize that that's not service. You know, the water, the heavyweight bond paper, that's not going to deliver service for you. It's the people and your processes that are going to deliver that for your clients. It's fantastic. So uh, we're here at Clio Cloud Conference in 2019, just in case there's any question, people are listening to old episodes. And uh, as Clio has done now, I think that for the last four years at least, they've just released their uh, legal trends report, which is one of my favorite parts of Clio Cloud Conference. And one of the things that always that keeps coming out is this disparity between uh, what lawyers perceive and what clients perceive and expect from a service standpoint. What are the, some of the things that you think 
you know, you, now that you've, you've decided that this is where you're going to be in the market, what can you do to listen and respond better to where your clients, what kind of client experiences your clients are having? The key that you mentioned was, what can you, can you do to listen? Clients aren't going to offer it up for the most part. You have to directly ask them. And it's, it can be as simple as, we were trained to do this at the hotel. What could we do better? Because if you ask the generic, how was everything? People are just going to nod and say, oh, it was fine, and not give you any information. You have to make them work a bit when they respond to the question, only to get the response you're looking for. If you say, hey, what could I do better about this? They're going to think and they're going to respond that way versus saying, well, how was everything? Yeah, it's fine. Like, I got what I paid for the end. But if you say, well, you know, we just represented you in this estate planning. What could we do better? Well, you know, you sent me Word documents and knowing on the back end that like the way a document gets coded in Word can be different and reflect differently on different computers, knowing that it's going to show up in a looking completely different on somebody else's computer, what can you do to address that problem? And one of the things I do is I usually will send the Word version as well as a PDF so clients can see, all right, here's the Word. It should look fine. But in case it doesn't, here's the PDF, which I know looks fine. And when I'm creating that PDF, I'm just printing it and printing it as a PDF. So it should just be reflected exactly as it is as a Word document. I'm not doing a whole lot of extra work. I'm not going through and reading it line by line the way I did on the Word doc. It takes a few more minutes just to pull it together. But then I can make sure that the client sees what they should. Like where Are the line breaks or the page breaks in the right place? Things like that. It's fantastic insight and advice there. One more substantive question, just because I can't help myself. One of the things that lawyers struggle to connect the dots with is the impact of the client experience on client development. So the impact of how they're, the quality of the experience the, the clients, their current clients have with their ability to get their next clients. I don't even know if there's a question in there as much as an observation. Just keep on going. But what have you seen? Have you seen a direct connection between the uh, experience that's being delivered and a lawyer's ability to get their next clients? I do, but I take it a step backwards. Client experience for me is part of service because client experience is great and there, there's nothing wrong with focusing on it. But the problem that I see with it is that it focuses just on what the client receives. It doesn't focus on what the partner does to and how they interact with staff members or associates or whoever it is. You have to look at it at more than just the client experience level because at the end of the day, the clients are going to come and go. It's your staff that's going to stick around, you know, the staff, the partners, everybody who's working for that firm in any capacity. You have to make sure that you're focusing on them and that service not only goes to people who are paying you, but it's also the people that you pay as employees or owners, whatever it is. You've got to focus on both sides of it. It's not just a focus on what the client wants because you can be client focused as you want, but if you get a call that says, my, you know, your child is going to the hospital, your client focus is going out the window. And that's just, you know, it's a reality that you have to adopt your service practices to say, look, at some point, somebody's not going to be there on a Thursday afternoon because they get some odd call that we never saw coming. A culture of service. Right. Wonderful. So last substantive question, how can technology support lawyers who want to build this culture of service? Technology is great because one of the things it can do is it allows lawyers as the owners to set up a consistent delivery for employees for clients. How can we make it easier for everybody? It was something I didn't notice and kind of was resisting. Not that I didn't like the technology, but resisting the aspect of technology can be part of the service. The problem is when you get funneled into where the technology is the only way of getting in touch. There's a company, they're a big one. They do a lot of technology things. When something goes wrong, getting a human to where I can explain the problem is really tough and it takes more effort than it should. And that's the thing to look out for. Just because you've automated a process, you've got an email onboarding sequence where you're providing, you know, we're going to send them this information, then we're going to send them this information 24 hours later, and then this information 24 hours after that. Don't get so wrapped up in making the technology work that you lose sight of the overall picture. Great insight. Thank you so much. Well, 
It looks like we've reached the end of the road for our episode. I want to thank John Strohmeyer for joining us today. Really appreciate your time and insight. You are welcome, Guy. If our listeners have questions or wish to follow up, how would you best like them to reach out to you? You can email me, john at strohmeyerlaw.com. If you want some more information about what I'm thinking about in client service, you can go to fivestarcouncil.com. I've got a blog there. You can sign up and get my quick report on what I think is going on in the legal industry. If you want to follow me on Twitter, I'm John the Lawyer. Fantastic. Thank you again. Also, thank you to our listeners for tuning in. If you like what you heard, please rate and review us in Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting app. I'm Guy Sakalakis. Until next time, thank you for listening. If you'd like more information about what you've heard today, please visit LegalTalkNetwork.com. Subscribe via iTunes and RSS. Find us on Twitter and Facebook. Or download our free Legal Talk Network app in Google Play and iTunes. The views expressed by the participants of this program are their own and do not represent the views of, nor are they endorsed by, Legal Talk Network, its officers, directors, employees, agents, representatives, shareholders, and subsidiaries. None of the content should be considered legal advice. As always, consult a lawyer. Uh